First, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank President uh, Matsumoto and the Kyoto University for your kind invitation for me to be able to speak in front of such a distinguished audience. Coping with the uh, central theme of this conference, I set my, the title of my talk is the Chinese character and the cultural influence. So I'll give a very short and comprehensive introduction to the ideas. And many of the points I mentioned will, you will be listening, I think we'll be, li be listening to much more uh, deep discussions in the papers uh, in the following sessions. But more than, well, according to the, uh, the legend, more than 4,000 years ago, the Yellow Emperor's historian official, Chang Jie, created Chinese characters, and then suddenly, heaven reigned with grains, and the ghosts cried in the night. And let's take a look at what happened that day. So we have the characters, mountain and even water. But how can river and the creek be expressed? They're both waters. Yes, we just use the water and respective sound. So we all know that writing is the medium and the vehicle of culture. The four most famous ancient writing systems in the world, the uh, Mesopotamian uh, cuneiform, Chinese oracle bone inscriptions, the Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics, and the Maya scripts. Of the four, only uh, Chinese character writing system is still in use. All other three just vanished. Why is this? If we go back to the ancient time, I think our ancestors, if they want to put down something, some ideas or for communication, the uh, uh, most natural choice is to, to draw, to, to make the pictographs. You see the, uh, the very uh, uh, the, the, uh, similarity between the Egyptian hieroglyphics and the Chinese oracle inscription uh, in you see the uh, similar crouching posture of women and the sun of course is the one and the only and the most striking thing is to me is the similarity between the vessels the, the Egyptian and the Chinese used to keep their precious liquid. But there's a limit for picture writing. So the question is, how can abstract concept be portrayed? So it, the, in the case of a Chinese, it evolved, it evolved into ideograms and a logic complex. So the, in the case of uh, ideograms, they're very indicative, like the up and the down, the, the, head, the right and the left and the right. And uh, the logic cameras is normally uh, ca composed of two uh, pictographics and linked with a special logic, which gives a new meaning. We have a tree here and the sun here. But if we combine these two in such a sense that the sun coming from behind the tree, and that's what you see when you face the east. 
So this is the Chinese character for the East. And you have a man here and a tongue or, or speech here. When you put these together, we have the word character Xin. Xin, when it's used as a noun, is the letter. When it's used as an adjective, it's trustworthy. So human words are trustworthy. So you are ancient Chinese mind is quite wishful. And you see a lot of more uh, interesting examples. I just saw one uh, uh, Professor uh, Matsumoto show us with a, a, a woman here and a child on the other side. We, we <laughs> <laughs> but here, we said that means good. And you have a sun and a moon that's shining, of course, and the two trees and make the woods. So when the uh, uh, civilization develops into a certain uh, level, there's a requirement for one-to-one -one corresponding correspondence between the spoken and the written language. And obviously, the pictographs are unable to do this. And they are gradually replaced by phonetic uh, spelling systems. But why did Chinese characters uniquely develop in the different pathway? In my opinion, the answer is the appearance of pictophonetic. It's to use the simple character as the radical or part of the, 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 the character. Employs uh, sound that will keep the meaning of the other part and create the more complicated homophones. So its appearance to solve the problem of bridging the uh, spoken language and the written one. Where there's a sound, there's a character. So we're going to use this word, tone, as an example. Tone itself is the same and identical. Now we have a series of tone, they all pronounce the same, but with different radical. When this tone coupled with the metal, it means cover. When this tone coupled with the tree, it's the wood oil tree. And this tone coupled with the bamboo, is the bamboo cylinder. When it's cut on top of it, a grass, it's a shunjiku, sukiyaki vegetable. And the pictophonetic characters are the most convenient means to create new characters. Uh, I was a student of chemistry, so I used the uh, periodic table of elements, for example. For all the me metallic elements, or metals, the each and the everyone has a gold or metal radical. So we have these metals, for copper, cobalt, manganese, radium, uranium. For all the long metals, they each has a stone radical. We have the stone radical here. It's for copper, boron, phosphorus, sulfur, and silicon. All gases elements, the gaseous elements, are with the gas radical. Like this. So it's oxygen, helium, hydrogen, chlorine, and fluorine. And we have only two elements in liquid state uh, at the ambient conditions, and this is uh, uh, bromine and the mercury, they're all with the waters. So there's no exception. So proportionally speaking, the pictophonetic character accounts for the highest percentage. At the time of the Qing and the Han dynasty, uh, already passed 80% of all, of all characters. In modern common use Chinese character, 90% are pictophonetics. So if it were not the, for the, for the uh, uh, picto, pictographic, uh, I'm sorry, this mistake is pictophonetic characters, so more than 80% of the Chinese characters we use today would have no means for expression. And they would probably, actually, almost uh, definitely be replaced by a phonetic spelling system. So perhaps the appearance of this uh, pictophonetic character really was the time when heaven reigned 
with, uh, with grains and the ghost to cry in the night. This, this is the moment that startled the heaven, the earth, and it moved the ghost and the spirit. The flexible use of the six rules of creating Chinese character resulting the expression of a shape, of meaning, as well as song. So the majority of the new characters can be guessed if we see a new word. We don't know what it is, and that can be guessed simply by reading one part of it. And you get an almost 80% chance to be right. Simultaneously preserving the characters the characteristic visual recognition. So it is the only ancient writing system still in use This is visually recognized. There are two instinct uh, consequences of, uh, uh, for a, uh, a, a visually recognized language. The first one is the visual recognition language does not change according to dialectic difference. Phonetic writing changes according to the regional spoken language, evolving into uh, dialectic writings. For example, Latin language in Europe uh, evolved into original dialectic writings, becoming uh, today's French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Italian. We know there are uh, many di dialectics in, uh, in, in China, uh, at least uh, eight major dialectic, but they they all use the same written language. The other uh, consequence is, of course, the unique artistic element of Chinese character, the beauty of a calligraphy. This shows a seal script written by uh, Mr. Du Zhonghao, a contemporary calligrapher in Taiwan, and the regular script by Ouyang, Ouyang Xun, in the 8th century Tang Dynasty. And this is a cursive script by Yu Yuren, suppose it's considered as uh, the, one of the greatest uh, calligraphy of the last century. And a running script by the famous Su Dongpo. <coughs> so the flow, the flowing beauty of the calligraphy uh, and, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's only matched by the, the watery uh, music of a cello. We can see uh, on this. The static beauty of the uh, Chinese character is uh, showing a very special kind of art. It's called a seal script. The history of the art of the seal script can backdate it to the Warring State period. Fusing Chinese calligraphy, blade lines, and the sp very specific quality of the natural stone in the metal, we have uh, this uh, very very uh, as classically uh, elegant simplicity, showing the whole universe in a square, square inch of the script. And in recent years, the beauty of a calligraphy is even fused with the body language. And this is shown by the very famous Cow Gate dancing groups that will show, show you how uh, the dancers express the beauty of a calligraphy. Sorry. Hmm? 
Okay. So the uh, standardization of Chinese characters has given rise to 5,000 years of uh, continuous, inclusive Chinese culture. And Chinese character is also the vehicle that propagates Chinese culture into other Asian peoples. So more than, 80, more than 60% of Japanese and Korean total vocabulary can be traced back to Chinese origin. And the internationality of Chinese character lasted for more than 1,000 years till 20th century. So the spoken Chinese language is by no means international, but Hanzi or Kenji it, it is. A historian professor, uh, Nishijima Sadao of Tokyo University, he proposed the theory of the East Asian world, holding that Hanzi or uh, Kenji cultural circle is comprised of the following essential factors. The investigative Teacher, uh, Hanzi Confucianism, Mahayana Buddhism, technology, and the imperative law. Of all these influences, Hanzi is the most important one. The Greater China and the East Asian economies and economic circle actually overlaps with the Hanzi cultural circle. You can see from this, this map. So mainly in China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Singapore together hold more than 70% of the foreign reserve of the world. And the population in this circle comprises one-fourth of the world. And today, more than 30 million so-called foreigners are learning Chinese. And the renaissance of Chinese culture is sprouting. And Hanzi would once again play the role, the vehicle, and the medium for we some new universal values to the 21st century by fusing with the Western culture, just like uh, the, 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 my, my previous speaker mentioned many times. The importance of the internationalization of Chinese character has been re-evaluated. But there were times of doubt and worry. The first came when the time of the rise of a personal computer because of the input system barrier once led to the worry of Chinese information delay. But thanks to the effort of the past few decades, various, various systems of transforming Hanzi into a phonetic spelling systems have been invented for inputting Chinese. And the maturity, but it's the maturity of the touch screen handwriting technique brings about a genuine Chinese input system. This is a true milestone. So now you use the touch screen uh, handwriting system if you input a Chinese character by writing. Instead of seeing a group of uh, uh, homophones at the bottom of the screen, which is sound similarly for you to pick up the one you want. In this case, it shows a group of words that look similar. So this is what I call a genuine Chinese input system. The visual art of Chinese character inspired technology advancement, such as the unique art fund Steve Jobs put into the Apple system, and the high recognition accuracy of the HTC technology. The unique visual recognition system of Chinese character is gradually developing to different dimensions of culture and creative arts to become one of the leading trends in the 21st century. And the second complication comes from the traditional character versus the simplified characters. I have no time to go in to deeper into this very complicated issue. I'll just show you a, a few examples. In the wake of the simplification of Chinese words in mainland China, there are some good ones and there are also some bad ones. Uh, 
For example, I just show you this one. This one means、uh, dust. It's composed of two parts: a deer, an animal, running over the surface of the earth. So you see the dust. This is the traditional Chinese character, but in simplified Chinese character, the part of the earth is retained, but the deer is replaced with tiny. So tiny earth is dust. It's much simplified, but the the width of creation character Chinese character remained. So this is a good one, and this is a not so good one. This is a face. Pronouncing is mian, face or facial. But in the traditional Chinese, these two words pronounce the same face, facial、uh, mian, but they mean differently. This is a face, and this is like like la mian, noodle or flower, because we have a radical, which means、uh, wheat. It's the flower coming from wheat. But in simplified word, we use the same mian for face and for noodle. This is by no means logical. So what we do with this problem? So my organization is having a joint project with the、uh, Ministry of Education in mainland China, which we're, we're building. In the cloud, that means we use、uh, cloud computing technology, a Chinese language knowledge base, and that knowledge base will provide the functions of a cultural exchange, cultural、uh, heritage, and the cultural popularization. So, in the case of a cultural heritage, this we also encountered the problem、uh, or the question: so, why can people today? Still read and understand the official script of 2,000 years ago.、Uh, the, this picture shows the、uh, Ma Wangdui official script、uh, on Chinese silk.、Uh, my per- I have a personal experience with this uh, this uh, 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 script. When I visit uh, uh, the Ma Wangdui Museum in、uh, Changsha, Hunan Province,、uh, in 2003. Uh, well, I was reading the script. I could read about maybe 60 percent of it, and then I saw or heard someone behind me ask me in English, "Are you really reading this?" I look back. There was an old couple from the United States. I, I, I told them, "Of course, I'm reading this." And the, old, the, the gentleman told his wife, "Look, we are eyewitnessing a living ancient civilization. Because here comes a guy." In, in front of this, the script written 2,000 years ago, and direct communicate with the writing. So this is a writing system. And another thing is, of course, the we need the exchange, as, especially with mainland Chinese uh, uh, language. They are、uh, they they develop into quite different uh, uh, things in、uh, both. Uh, uh, pronunciation, or the way you write, and、uh, even the meaning. I just give you one、uh, most uh, interesting、uh, example. It's Wu Xin, which means heart warming Taiwan, but means heart upset in mainland China. It's just the opposite. We do need the cultural popularization with this knowledge base, so that will provide the functions of a digital publication. For e-books and the mobile apps, and for education promotions, Chinese education or online Chinese learning as a foreign language, and of course a platform of inter- interdisciplinary cooperation with the cultural creative industry or the website builders, and this system will be launched in. Uh, let's say a little bit more than two months. Yeah, the first version. <laughs> so we、we'll、go back. If we go to the、uh, the, the part of the ser- search engine of the system,、uh, you want to、uh, let's say、uh, look up 
a phrase, to do, literally translation of earth being, earth being. And you will find in parallel the zhu yin, Taiwan, and the pin yin in China, to do. And then you find the meaning. In Taiwan means peanut. But in Da in mainland main China it means potato. Of course you also see the technical terms in parallel, because most of them were translated from English, but they translate differently. So you can see the difference and for comparison. <coughs> For the part of Heinz Arts, there will be a collection of 100,000 of the best calligraphy in more than 1,000 years. And in the area of, of uh, online learning, you can find all kinds of softwares, the database, and the archive, and the learning tools, and even the testing software well. You can test your, the properties of yourself. Of course, you also learn it uh, just by yourself. For instance, if you want to uh, yeah, things like this. Okay. So this platform is meant to help all Chinese or Chinese users, Hanzi users, recognize both traditional and simplified Chinese characters. Its future deve development will be decided by the users. So I would imagine that in the future, Taiwan, Hong Kong, the Macau users may adopt a few more good simplified characters, like we just mentioned. And those from many China and Singapore may drop the use of a few bad ones. So the users could join together to create a re-standardization of Chinese character. Shu Tong Wen, literally speaking, Word by word means writing same character or the standardization of Hanzi. And the first time was achieved by the first emperor over 2,000 years ago with brutal force. And this time it will be achieved through Wang Dao, a democratic and benevolent process. I thank the National Palace Museum, the National Hi Museum of History in Taipei, and the Editorial Office of Chinese Linguipedia. And this is the name of the, the website. So you can look it up a little bit more than two months later. And uh, before closing, I must ag admit that when I told the Chinese character, or Hanzi, being the only visual or visually recognized word still in use today. I exaggerated a little. Actually, there were some other pictographs still in use by uh, minorities. These three words we have here. This, this is a we. Actually, this is a Dongba pictographs used by Na Xi people in Yunnan province and probably also in the East Tibet. And the three words is we go drink. Thank you for listening.